Oh, so nice to see you. So we're going to start a brand new tutorial series here. Uh, we're going to take this here tile set. We're going to create a little bit of a, mm, a platformer in Godot. And uh, we're going to utilize uh, some of the auto tiling features. Um, well, I'm going to use this as the base for the tutorial series. It's uh, called Dunjo. You can find it on Itch.io. Simply go to Itch.io and search for Dunjo. The guy that did it is Arx Designs. It's a CC40 licensed tile set. It's really small. It's 12 by 12 pixel. And there you go. I've, I have added some additional tiles to it. I will go ahead and show you that. You can see how tiny it is here. But you see I've added some additional tiles to satisfy the auto tiler so that we can get some kind of nice little dungeon type things. Okay. So I have this empty project. And I'm going to, that, that PNG file that I just showed you, I'm going to drag that into down here. And we're going to go ahead and there's one thing that you want to do when you're doing pixelized stuff in Godot is you want to make sure that it imports these PNG files without filters. So I'm going to go up here to the import tab with the Dunjo modified PNG selected. And then I'm going to say uh, I, want a, I want a 2D pixel preset. So that turns off the filtering. I'll hit re-import and then we'll have crisp nice pixelated art. So the next thing we want to do is I want to create a base level uh, from which I guess all of our levels will derive from. That's a great idea. Well thank you very much. I'm, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, I'm going to create a 2D scene and I'm going to call it I'm just going to call it level and then under that I'm going to create a tile map because that's what we're all about today. And I'm going to call that uh, tiles. Really complicated, but you know, there you go. You see it, you can type it in. And then we're going to go over here and I'm going to go over to tile set. I'm going to create a new tile set. The cell size here is going to be a 12 by 12 because that's our size of our tiles. Um, and then I want to click on tile set and it's going to go into the editor and you see this down here open up. I'm going to expand from the bottom panel. And now we can click this little plus button to add a texture to our tile set. And we're going to click, click the Dunjo modified tile set, open her up, and we'll zoom in like this. And what we need is we want a new auto tile. Now notice when I click that, this little couple of icons come up. This is the snap and show grid and we want that. Now here's a trick and I think that this should be changed in the user interface. Perhaps they will. Uh, but when you click this or you, you mouse over it, you see that it says configurable via the inspector. So enable snap and show grid configurable via the inspector. Well if I click it, the grid comes up but nothing comes up in the inspector. Well uh, this was a little annoying to me because I had to figure this out because it I pulled my hair out a little bit. But you have to click into an area and then the snap options show up. Then you can change them. So whatever, I think, I think it should be a little bit more intuitive than that, but whatever. We're going to change the offset to one by one because I know that these tiles are offset by one uh, in the PNG file. And the step is, of course, 12 by 12. Separation, there is a pixel separation between on the X and Y axis. And there we go. So we said we wanted a new uh, atlet auto tile. So we're in the region a selection. So I want to select all of these lovely things right here. And that's going to be our, um, our auto tile setup. And we're going to go down to here to selected tile. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to name it auto stone because it sounds cool. And then we have to do the same kind of thing here. It's a 12 by 12 subtile, and the subtile spacing is all one as well. And we also want what we call a 3 by 3 minimal bit mask tile, tile bit mask mode. So that's going to, that, the bit mask is going to tell Godot how to, how to arrange these tiles whenever we put them beside, certain tiles beside each other. So if we have two of these certain way, then we can tell, make Godot, Draw them, draw particular pieces of these tiles so that they so that it looks good. So we're going to do that right now. And there are some uh, GD Quest has some good tutorials about the some of the auto tile and the tile mask, the bit mask stuff that we're going to go over. So you should check that out. Um, but we're going to click the bit mask button, 
and we're going to start to draw some little little uh, some little areas on our title set. Now, what I want is I want when we have a fully surrounded tile. Uh, in other words, whenever this auto tile, when we have a, like a complete grid of tiles surrounding it, I want it to display this one. That's what that. That's basically what that means. And then the rest, when we when we have basically a two by two area at least, we are going to use these tiles. And then so whenever there's nothing around these, you're going to get this corner piece, etc. And then these little guys are for whenever you just have singles. So what I'm going to do is basically I'm saying if I just draw a single row of tiles like this, then this one will be all of the stuff in between, and then this will be these will be the ends. So that's basically all uh, we're doing right here. And then I've got the same, the equivalent thing right here. Um, and let's see if I can remember. This is a single tile, so when nothing is surrounding this tile, I want to draw this tile, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to remember what these other ones were. I think this is a T tile, so if you got a T going this way, and I think there was a T going this way. I think this one was a T going like this, and a T going like that. These are cur uh, corner tiles, single corner tiles. Yep, I think that is correct. We can test it in a minute, but first let's 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 select the icon for what we want to show when we're when we're showing uh, this particular tile in our little drawer title set drawing our tile set. So I'm going to go click icon and I want to select this guy for the for that particular one. And additionally, I want some new single tiles as well because we will be utilizing these as well. That would be the chest. So I'll call him the chest. I click on it again. We want the key as well. So we're going to just set this stuff up real quick so that we can get on with it. I'm going to call this door open. And new single tile. And we'll do door closed. There's a door outline. Door outline. And of course, what game is a game without a lovely chain in it? So we must have the chain. And let's have a regular plain old block. And we also, of course, have the new and improved quad block. That would be the three block. Yes. And let's grab at least the first uh, part of, or the first um, frame of the coin. What we'll do with the coin later is we'll use that We'll have a script that goes through and looks for these and then instantiates an actual coin object. And then we'll do the same thing with the player. So we're going to grab at least, we're basically we're going to make it so that we can just draw all that stuff in the tile map and then have it all just just be, you know, anything that needs to be replaced, it can just be replaced, it will be replaced by uh, us with a script by um, actual uh, other game objects. Uh, we'll do a little single platform as well. Why not? Single platform. We'll do a uh, block outline. And let's say we want to do the player. So we'll know where to put the player. And I think that's pretty good, except where did the key go? We named the key. Oh, there. The names are a little bit off, aren't they? That's interesting. Okay, so with that, I'm going to click the little save button here because we're going to save this as our own tile set. And uh, we'll just, for now, I'm going to call it the dungeon tile set since we are making a dungeon. Now, I'll go back by clicking the little back arrow. And you see, we're 12 by 12, but you see, all that's huge for what we've got. But what we need to do is we need to change our resolution. So I'm going to go into project settings here. And we are going to go down here to well first I want to do this. I want to we need to change the snapping in the rendering quality. We want to use pixel snap. So we don't want any floating point values or anything like that. We want to we want to snap to integer integer uh, coordinates. So we've got that done. Now I want to go to display window. We're going to change this to basically an even multiple of 12 so that we'll have uh, a, a good, you know, a even nice whole amount of 
tiles displayed at all times in our window. And we'll do 324 by 168. We can increase that if we need to later, but for now that'll work. And we're gonna, we're gonna upscale everything to 1280 by 720. And for that, uh, we want down here on our scaling mode, we want 2D and we want keep. So that will black bar things as what it needs to and it will actually blow the size up nicely. So that's all we should need to do. And notice the window got much, much smaller which is great. So there are ways, there are different ways we could do this, but I'm thinking that I want to set up, take the auto stone and just set it up like this, such that basically uh, whenever we, uh, whenever we um, take this base level and then we uh, create a new inherited scene from it, we just end up digging out the level that we want. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, no, or we could just, we could just have it like this. And then you just make your level, you know. I mean, either way, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, maybe maybe this would be better. And you notice our auto tiling isn't completely perfect because you see we've got some we got some stuff going on right there. We could we could fix that, um, but. For the purposes of the tutorial, I think it'll all be just fine. I think we'll leave it open like this, and then we can always go in here and just do this and then dig it out if we want to. So there is our base level. So let's save that, and I want to create a folder called Levels, because we want to. What we want to do is we want to make this little fella. Uh, this we want to make a, the game script. We want it to load each level in succession as you complete them. So we'll make a folder for all those levels, and in that folder will put the base level scene. So let's do that. Now, so we have our auto tile working and we'll just show you that, see, you can do all sorts of cool stuff and make all sorts of nifty things and the auto tile responds like we want it to based off of that bit mask that we drew. Wonderful. So let's take this and let's go ahead real quick and I'm going to close it and we're going to create an inherited scene from that base level. So now we have a brand new scene inherited from the level, base level we created. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And we'll call it level one. Just we want something in here that we can uh, use for our, uh, just, to, just to test things out. So we'll just, you know, we'll just add a few things here and there just to uh, make sure that things are working correctly. And of course, oh, whoops, we got to add some change to the level because, you know, what what dungeon is complete without chains? Uh, perhaps a chest to test that out as well. We'll stick that over here. Maybe a coin or two. Um, and we need, a, we need a closed door because that will be one of our mechanics is how you get out. Would be you've got to find the key and then you can open the door with it. And... Uh, I don't know, just for fun, we'll add a couple of little quad blocks and we'll add the player. So there is our, our level, okay? I'm gonna save that. And now let's go in here and create another scene. Let's, let's uh, call this scene, well, okay, we'll create a 2D node and we'll call this node game. Because that's gonna be our main game node. So I'm gonna save the scene. I'm gonna save it in the root of our folder and it's going to be called game. And I'm going to click just run real quick because I want to select, make sure and tell this thing that the main scene is going to be the game. So then what we're going to do is uh, we are going to do a couple of things. And that is we are going to create a new script real quick called game. And now what we want to do here is we want to get rid of all this stuff. But what we want to do is we want to load levels from this levels folder. So I want to do a, uh, we're going to do a constant because I want to get the level path. So we'll say like level path equals the resource. So that's how you do these things in Godot. Godot knows about this file system. So it's kind of, it's cool. You can look it up. It's great stuff. So it's, that would be levels. And then in addition, we can do the, the cool string formatting stuff. I'm going to say level percent D. 
and we can actually replace that percent %d with our level number. Brilliant! Thank you. It is brilliant. I know. So let's make an actual uh, let's make an actual function that we can use to load uh, a level. And so we'll say, what number do you want? And we'll make that an integer. Um, and then we we we're going to want to add it to the to the root of the scene. So we're going to go do a get tree, and that always happens. Get tree dot root dot root. There we go. Okay, and then we we want to look first. We want to see if uh, the root node, which would be this node for game. If it has a node named, what did, what did we call, let's see, what did we call our base level root? It was level, okay? So if it has, if it has a node named level, if our root does, then we want to destroy that, that root. Um, I believe that we can just say root, dot remove child level I mean actually actually no I'm sorry let's use the uh, instead of that let's use the shortcut that won't work <laughs> let's use the shortcut so we'll just remove the level root or the level uh, node I don't think you have to queue it for deletion I think when you remove it from the scene and you're no longer using it it will automatically get deleted but we'll We'll find out, right? So there we go. Um, and then we want to load the level. So let's do that. So what we want to do is say we wish we want to load that level path, a constant we have up there. And then we want to replace that percent %d up here with that, with this number for the level number. And then we want to instance that. So that would be our level. Now what we want to do probably later is we want to add a to do here, which is check if level actually exists. That's an important thing because we need to know whenever the levels are done, when we can throw up the victory screen or the game over screen or whatever. The next thing we need to do is add the child, this level, to our scene. And then let's return true. What we'll do... Um, later is we'll come and check if that level actually exists and then if it doesn't we'll return a false indicating that there is no level with that number available let's add a variable type integer to he our uh, script call it level number so we'll know which level to to run so now let's add another function because I think we're going to do, need to do some initialization. We'll call it init. We may put we'll put things in there later, but what we want to do here for now, just to test things out, it will say load level, and then we'll say level number. You see, yeah, that's going to be great, right? And then in function ready, since we're doing stuff to the level root, we have to wait until everything is set up. So what we'll do is we'll do what's called a deferred call to our init function. I believe that we have to do that. What we can do here, we'll do this. I believe we have to do that. And in order to prove that we have to do that, let's call init and see if we can just do it directly. I think we'll get an error because of the way we're doing this. Yeah, see there's the debugger and it says, parent node is busy setting up children, add node failed, consider using call deferred. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use call deferred. And so if this works, we should see our level loaded and our little level load scheme should be, yes, and it works. Fantastic, beautiful, and with that, I think we're going to leave it right here. And when we come back next, we're going to look at figuring out or setting up the background um, color, perhaps adding a camera as well, just in case we want to make the levels larger than, than the screen size. And um, we'll look at a few other things and continue getting our game uh, ready to go. And with that, we'll see you next time.